When we talk about local fighters, to whom are we referring? There's much conversation about the Iraqi army's capabilities and whether or not they have the commitment and capacity to retake territory. So far, they haven't demonstrated that they are able and willing. When we look at operations in Emerle, or the recent operation in Tikrit, it's not the Iraqi army that's involved. It's Shiite militias identified with the Iraqi armed forces. Uh, in Diyala province, where villages were liberated by Shiite militias, there were terrible reprisals and atrocities committed against local Sunnis. So if part of our vision for preventing or draining the swamp of support for ISIS involves getting the Sunni tribes back on board, supporting Shiite militias who go into villages and clean up, certainly not consistent with what we hope to accomplish in the long term. There's also much talk about the moderate Syrian opposition. For all of our efforts to find them, I still don't know who they are. We're not supporting the Syrian National Council. We had announced support for the Free Syrian Army. Now we've abandoned it. There is an effort to do a train and equip program in four countries, but that's going to take a year or two. And at the end of that, we'll have maybe three to 5,000 fighters trained. So this idea of working with moderate Syrian opposition to me is a little bit of a stalking horse. So when you look at who are the local fighters with whom we can work, the only ones who have proven commitment and capability are the Kurds. They were able to defeat ISIS's advance. They were able to retake territory in the Mosul Dam and in Sinjar. And it's not only the Kurds, the Peshmerga, who have shown capability. What happened in the small city of Kobani is an extraordinary tale of heroism that deserves great commendation. This Kurdish city on the Turkish-Syrian border was besieged by ISIS. ISIS said that they would make a point of going into the city and killing all of its Kurdish defenders. By the way, 40% of the defenders of Kobani were women. So the People's Protection Units of the PYD, the Syrian Kurdish Party, fought valiantly. But they were no match for ISIS. ISIS had 80% of the city. Up to that point, the US kept consistently saying, Kobani has no strategic value. Well, we recognize that it may have had no strategic value militarily, but it had enormous symbolic value. So we launched airstrikes against ISIS positions. We did that after they'd already entered the city. Had we done that before they came in, it would have been an entirely different field of battle. We also airlifted weapons to the Syrian Kurds over the objection of President Erdogan in Turkey. In fact, in his response to the events in Kobani, Erdogan likened the Syrian Kurds and ISIS, saying they're both terrorist groups and there's no difference between them. In fact, what ISIS succeeded in doing is bringing Kurds together in a fashion that had never happened before. You had the People's Protection Units from Syria. They were joined by the PKK in large numbers. Pajak forces from Iran, and also the Peshmerga, 155 came in with sophisticated weaponry to relieve the city. And ultimately, ISIS was defeated there. More than 1,000 ISIS fighters were killed in the Battle of Kobani. They had staked great reputation, and their recruitment was based largely on an ability to seize Kobani, make it their own. The liberation of Kobani was a huge strategic setback for ISIS, and it demonstrated that the Kurds, not only in Iraqi Kurdistan, but in the region, would prove to be our best allies. <laughs>